Calling this fiasco a debate would be to give it credit that it doesn't deserve. Much like the tedious and difficult job of cleaning out sewers, it's something disgusting but something necessary to do. So too is analyzing this exchange between two amateur filmmakers and two professionals in their field. We're going to examine exactly what sort of dialogue is going on here, what points, if any, are made, and discuss. James Burmis of Loose Change. I'd just like to thank Jason. you uh, for the opportunity to take on the government's lies and uh, Popular Mechanics, which is a Hearst Yellow Journalism publication's lies as well. And I would just say, look for yourself. All right, so this is not a formal uh, exchange, obviously. What is he doing? Well, he's doing two things. First, he's saying that the government lies, and then he's saying this uh, credibility of the people that are speaking are um, also in doubt. They're yellow. They're um, just marketed by the government. They're, they're full of lies as well. And the key factor is the last phrase he says. Look for yourself. What this actually is, is not a call to examine the evidence for yourself, but to think of, well, come on, I mean, this can't possibly be what they're saying. And what he leads into next plays on people's fear that the government is telling lies and that this uh, popular mechanics is just a... Uh, tool being used by the government. This is an open field and for the first time in history we have a crater and no plane debris. Look at any other plane crash and you'll find a tail section. Now this is an unestantiated claim. He is saying that for the first time ever since there have been crashes this is the only time that this has ever been. But where are his sources for this? Where are the numerous data that he could put forward over and over again to show that what he has just said is absolutely, positively, 100% true that in every single case that has been documented of a plane crash that the tail section has indeed been found. If this is true, he should have overwhelming evidence to back it up. There were reports that this actually was strewn out over eight miles, and we have videotape of smaller pieces of debris. Uh, the coroner speaks for himself. We have the Pittsburgh Gazette, the editor-in-chief there, saying, again, there's nothing there that looks like a plane. Again, don't believe us. Go to sealosechange.com right now and watch it for free. Yes, yes, don't believe me. Believe the website that I've put up where you can watch the video that I've made. Don't believe me, though. Wait, what? All those people, you would use, normally have NTSB people in blue jackets to get the plane parts and put them back together. That's what happened with TWA 800 that was in the ocean. And you don't have that. You have people in hazmat uniforms. Why? So all we're saying is, look, there's no plane in this open field at all. There's a 10-foot crater by 16-foot, and there's just smoke there. So where is this plane? That's all we're saying. Actually, if you go back, that's not all he's saying. He's saying that the government lies and that popular mechanics is... A tool or employee or something that's connected with the government that also lies and is not to be trusted. So he's saying more than go look at this stuff, a lot more. Collecting body parts. Well, he's never addressed us, and if you look at all of his media accounts in the days after when he was first asked, again, he said there were no body parts, and to this day, he has not seen a single drop of blood. So again, I would say that's more reliable than, you know, four years after the fact being contacted. Did you talk to him? Uh, he won't address us. Okay, in all of his media reports, he has said X, Y, and Z. Again, this would be something that would be easy to prove. You could produce video, audio, written uh, reports that are confirmed to be transcripts of what this person has said in this regard. If you're going to make a claim, prove that that claim is true. And of course he's not going to talk to you guys. You guys are nothing. You're amateurs. Why would he waste his time on you? I find, typically when we investigate these things, it's very easy to find public records, to find um, 
uh, the reports from all the various agencies that have investigated uh, these accidents. The, uh, the transcripts of the voice cockpit recorder have been released. In many cases, again, the, the sources, Jason, uh, those are all newspaper articles that are written day of, day after, a couple of days after. No, one you of know was what, a year after the fact. Uh, uh, oh, perhaps uh, you know oh, what it was, was like on those days, and you know how chaotic it was. You know how much misinformation typically comes out in the early hours of a of a major news event. Now, I want to comment if there was some sort of lies going on here, and if Popular Mechanics was just some sort of front that the government is using, they would never, ever, ever admit to mistakes being made. Uh, upon the first day, it wouldn't. It wouldn't happen. They would say, "No, absolutely not." Uh, it was right, right from the go. They would have uh, decredited that. They would have said that they were wrong, and they they would have done anything and everything to discredit those uh, articles. Rather, he admits to the fact that this is, uh, you know, misinformation that's going on within the first few days. Or even if it did occur a year later, the article was published that it might have been based upon incorrect information, what have you. If this was a cover-up of some sort, I think that they would be discrediting the newspapers rather than admitting to any sort of errors on their part of the newspaper or anything like that. Over time, with further research and good reporting, you can sift through those things and you can make progress in getting to the truth. Now remember, the loose change guys said that the government and you guys are liars, so we're, they're not going to believe that you're telling the truth, even if you are. Typically what we see on conspiracy websites is, is citations that go back to the earliest moments when the least information was available and virtually no reference to the voluminous research which is done uh, to follow up. Okay, well I would think two things about this. One, it would have been helpful to produce documentation that this is true, or at least reference where you can see the studies that they have done to indicate that uh, conspiracy websites often, more often than not, cite the earliest things rather than the later uh, information. Secondly, you do need to show that the later information is more reliable than the earlier information, if possible. Both of these things could be readily done, and I'm a little bit disappointed that Popular Mechanics didn't do it. The issue of cell phones is that for a majority of Flight 93's flight, it was flying over cruising altitude, and a number of these, now, a majority of the phone calls were coming from air, air phones, but the cell phone calls were coming from cruising altitude. Now, it is pretty much impossible in 2001 to sustain an extended conversation over a cell phone at cruising altitude from a commercial airliner. But, I mean, that's, that's not our strongest evidence. I mean, that's just one of the many things about that day that don't add, to up, that don't add up to us. The comment on the cell phone thing is so stupid that I don't even feel compelled to answer it. But he's completely lying about it. Secondly, however, is more interesting. He says, this is not the strongest case that we have. Well, wait a minute. Why aren't you using your strongest case? This is your time. This is your moment in history to blow out of the water this conspiracy theory, you should be using your strongest case against these people. Why would you use just this very weak case against them? Bring up your strongest case, not, your, not just one of the things that brought up questions. This is idiotic. We didn't say they worked well, we said they worked. And if you look at the record, many of the calls were dropped, they were incomplete. But especially over rural areas, you know, if you think about it, a cell phone tower covers, uh, can cover a couple hundred square miles. That coverage area goes up into the sky as well as horizontally ac across the ground. The, um, the reason that they improved the system was to avoid the drop calls and to isolate the cell phone transmissions from any possible interference with the avionics. As I said, the whole cell phone thing was completely and totally wrong and stupid. Now, let's analyze what sort of dialogue are these people engaging in. Is it a persuasive dialogue? Is it information gathering? Is it eccentric? What are they doing? Say a combination thereof. Popular Mechanics is actually doing an information-providing dialogue 
Whereas loose changes doing an erratic dialogue that makes little to no sense at all. Popular Mechanics is doing a persuasionary dialogue in the sense that they are trying to persuade not loose change, but the audience in general, that the facts do line up and that the facts are not being covered up or manipulated in any way. Something that loose change isn't concerned about. Loose change just wants you to go to their website, look at them, and make them a little bit more popular. Yes, it's for free, but they gain popularity from it and then credibility from that popularity. This isn't a debate and it's impossible to analyze, but I would say, without a doubt, Popular Mechanics wins in a landslide on a technical level. Loose Change made absolutely no points to look into or expand upon, whereas Popular Mechanics is at least referencing studies that one could investigate and do. Whereas Loose Change simply wants you to go to their website and not listen to us, just listen to the thing that we've produced. Until next time, peace out.